Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. It's Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually again. Today, uh, Brand Ambassador for Brother, we are taking over the page, and we have two brother educators, which you do not want to miss. I have seen their projects, and in fact, just like the last few weeks, we could do this every single day. The things that they have in their studio, actually, I would like to go through their studio. I got a little mini tour, and I think we're going to have to do this at the holiday season just to give people ideas on organizing and stuff. But that's not today. Today, you are going to see decorating shoes. You're going to see it's all about embellishing. We've got some bling going on. We've got shoes. We've got chairs. I can't tell you anything else. So I'm not going to make them wait. Come on up here, guys. Here we go. There's Lewis and Kim. Hey, guys. How are you? Good morning, Angela. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, everyone... Say, give them a warm welcome. If you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. You never know if your neighbor is sewing or crafting next to you. And today, I am so excited for what you two have brought. <laughs> we were on our own live chat yesterday for one hour, and we could have stayed on for three more hours, I think. My husband said, my goodness, who are you visiting with? <laughs> so, Louis, you first. Yes, Why don't you tell, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome. And I saw someone pop up from Kansas City, my original hometown. So thank you so much uh, for being with us. Uh, my name is Louis Carney. I am a brother educator, uh, one of our international educators. And we are um, glad to have you here with us to talk about embellishments today. And I don't know how well you can see my blazer. Oh, let's with see. All of the embellishments. Oh, uh, this it looks is, uh, awesome. Painting and crystals and all kinds of fun stuff. And so we're going to talk to you guys today about some cool things. So good morning and welcome or afternoon now, right? It's afternoon. Uh, yeah, I guess it depends where we are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kim, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, good morning. Good afternoon. I'm Kim Montanese. And I live in Amherst, Ohio, which is right on, almost on the shore of Lake Erie. So, um, you know, we just have a really beautiful fall going on right now. And, and it's been kind of nice to be home, although I do miss traveling. I miss that a lot. But um, we've had a beautiful fall here. I know Angela appreciates that, too. So, um, I mean, I don't it's know just about been Kim, Kim, where are you again? Amherst in Lorain okay. County, right on the shore of Lake Erie. Excellent. Well, you would not want our fall day today. It is windy, cold, and nasty. Exactly what um, you think of. Like, I'm thinking it's going to snow. <laughs> no, you, you can have all that. <laughs> you can keep, you can just keep it. So I also, um, I'm a uh, brother educator. Usually we're traveling all over, but now we get to stay home and really dig in. <clears throat> you know, we get to dig in and really use our products and use our imagination. So I don't know if this is a good thing or not. You saw what Lewis is uh, wearing. I don't know if we've gone over the edge now. Um, <laughs> so I'm wearing a boomerang shirt. Oh, you look fabulous. Although Lewis, Lewis is putting us both to shame, I have to say. He is. I know. I'm a little jealous. Well, you know, as the boy, I've got to kind of make an extra oomph. You know, you guys are the <laughs> girls, so you're just pretty. So I, you don't have to make extra. The boy has to go even extra. So, <laughs> Hey, uh, Louis, you just got a really nice compliment here from Marianne. Um, hey, Marianne, nice to see you, by the way. She took a class with you at Linda Z's, and she said you were not only knowledgeable, but you were able to answer questions about her machine that no one else has answered. And that does not surprise me one bit. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. And welcome is so good to hear from you again. I hope that one day soon, you know, we get through this crazy period in the world that we'll all be able to see each other again personally, face to face. Definitely. So, well, you know what? You both have some excellent projects for us today. So not only are you going to get some inspiration, they're actually going to give you a quick tutorial on how to do this. So, what, Kim, why don't you give us a little preview first of what you have? Okay. And uh, Louis and I will sit on the side and, and keep coming to bug you. <laughs> okay, perfect. So am I, and I'm, am I centered here? Okay. Yep, you so, look great. So I'm kind of the, the upcycler and it started because I was a little bit cheap and I didn't want to go spend, you know, 80 or $90 on a garment. And then if I make a mistake, then I feel bad. So I go to Goodwill or so that, you know, the secondhand stores and I buy lasers. 
and jackets and blouses and then upcycle them and make them beautiful again. So this is one that I've just started. Let's get that up close. You can see the really pretty. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. All along the edge. And this is the start of one of the embellishments. This is going to be, um, here's some of my fabrics. These are do peony pieces that I've had. I have Gorgeous. a do peony. I have a do peony problem. Yeah, Louis, can you see her fabric? Well, I'll, I would have to say Louis's stash is pretty good too, but that do peony is beautiful. Look at that. Well, this this is just the handful I pulled for this jacket. So there you go. So this is going to have big do peony roses on the stand up collar and down the front and a, around the cuff. So this is another one real quick. Um, this blouse was actually my own blouse and I had gained a lot of weight. So I had to buy this big blouse and then it had, it's like a tuxedo. It has tux um, sewn into it. And then I lost a lot of weight. So I was going to take this back and donate it. And by the time I was going to donate it, I realized that I had lost the weight again. So I decided to keep it. Um, and what this is, is the lyrics to the Beatles song, Blackbird embroidered right on each of the pleats. And then around the bottom are these um, paisleys and they're wrapped all the way around. The oh, I love the that. So now I've gained the weight back. So now it, it fits again. <laughs> I love that. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, if, it does, if it doesn't fit, you can give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> And this is a newer one. This is a jacket that I had in my own closet. Where's the camera? There it is. You're, and you're good. We'll yell at you if you're not in the right spot. <laughs> it's kind of a funny color. So um, to do, when I was doing this, I said, my gosh, if I wear this, I'm going to need shoes to go with them. Oh, so, bring those closer. There. Those are so stinking cute. That's what you're going to be teaching us today is how to decorate shoes. I love those. Could you bring that jacket back up? Yeah. So Take these, a are built in, these are built-in designs in our uh, new machine, our new Luminaire. Oh, my gosh. Those are gorgeous. Did you actually embroider right onto the jacket, or is, is that on tool and then you attach it like applique? No, I put it right on the jacket. Gorgeous. And then this was actually done separately, this little pocket. And this was done in the design center. Beautiful. And then, oh my gosh. She is I'll tell so you talented. Else about these shoes in a little bit. And then of course, because we're talking about embellishment, this was another really cute jacket just by itself. So all of these are scrapbooking findings from the craft store. Oh my goodness. And this little ruffle is made out of some drapery fabric that I found in the hall of a convention center when we were leaving. And this design is an embroidery design on our 10 needle machine. And then I made this little problem. <gasps> Look at the lace. Oh. These were little lace samples and drapery samples. Again, I found these on the floor at the convention center as we were pulling out when the vendors were leaving. And I found all of these and I thought they had my name on them, right? <laughs> of course they did. That's actually, hey, uh, while you're over there, oh my gosh, another pair of matching shoes. Oh. Wait, what? You could show what? the shoes and then when you're finished, somebody wants to see the inside of your pink jacket. Okay, so these are the shoes that I made to go with that um, steampunk jacket. And you see oh my they, gosh. Don't really, they don't really match on the front. And I'm going to show you how to do this. And most of my shoes start out this tan color. And we'll talk about that later when we go over to the other. Okay, wait, she wants to see the inside of the pink. Yeah, everybody's like loving that. Okay, it's real messy. It's It's been folded in a suitcase. So no, it, it looks, judgment. it almost looks like that's just the inside embroidery. It looks like it's decorated on the inside. That, I think that's what they saw. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, this was, um, I use a sticky wash away stabilizer because I float this in the hoop because it's sticky and then like baste around it and then embroider it. And then when you wash it away, you don't have all of that, you know, that stuff on the inside. So you don't have to rip out the lining or anything. You just embroider right on it. I did. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. You're going to see, 
<laughs> how many people do we have live right now? Over 400. They're going to be like, this is going to be the easiest project because everyone hates ripping out lining. I, I think this is brilliant. Well, at first I, you know, I tried that and then I said, forget this. I have some other ones I could show you, but that's not today. Um, <laughs> okay, we got that. And now leading into what we're doing over in the other room, this was another really cute jacket. It had oh, a cute little pebblum built in already, but I added the silk neckties on the bottom, the manufactured lace, although you can do that, you know, you can do that in your machine. And I have a, a little bit of a button problem. So I <laughs> use a lot of buttons. And um, this design is built, uh, this is from Ibroidery? Yes, it's from Ibroidery. Um, and then this is the big B, and I'm kind of on a B kick right now. So I'm gonna show you some stuff later that has a lot of Bs on it. Oh but my God. this was done separately <clears throat> as a big uh, independent, an independently standing piece on denim. The background was quilted with our fill, fill designs and then there's buttons all around. So this one also needed shoes, which we're gonna do that in a minute, but I think Lewis needs a turn, don't you? <laughs> hey, uh, Kim, <laughs> I have to tell you, every time you hold up one of these pairs of shoes, it's like, oh my goodness gracious. That's what she's gonna be showing guys. So just a little preview of what you're gonna see later on today. This, she's gonna show you how to do these. And before you go, um, you, you know, you can do this with lace that's already, like if you have an old lace doily, something like that, you can just decoupage them right onto the shoe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is gonna be a this is gonna be a troubled show for me because you do realize <laughs> that I have a lot of shoes downstairs that I'm like, oh I don't know if I want to wear those anymore. Now I'm gonna have an entire collection. <laughs> this is gonna be fantastic. <laughs> well and now I'm thinking about what Lewis is going to show you. And now you can also do that to these shoes. So now the idea is just, just stop. <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, Vicky wants to know if you would just show that white, that white top one more time, just up a little closer, and I'll bring you in by yourself. What part does she want? To, what part do you want to see, Vicky? So, Vicky, tell her if you want something specific. But that is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like you just designed your own fabric on that. I know. And I used the projector and the camera to place these paisleys so that it looks like, actually on the back, you can see better. I was able to rotate them and oh snug them up to one another without touching or overlapping. And I could change Absolutely them, gorgeous. change the size and rotate them. Um, Beautiful. Thank you. All right, Lewis. Oh Absolutely. no, I don't know if I can follow Kim. Let me unplug this. I don't know. <laughs> reverberation. Between um, I don't like, want to follow what Kim. she has and what you have, we're going to be in big creative trouble. But this is why we do this. It's so inspiring. My goodness gracious. <laughs> well, I am going to uh, today talk to you guys about using one of our other products that's so wonderful. And that is our brother, Scan and Cut. And the things I'm going to talk about can be done on any skin and cut. You don't need a particular uh, model. And the scan and cut is a standalone digital cutter. And that's an electronic cutter. And we have a I think we can pop up uh, the camera where we see this is the scan and cut. Now, this is the DX model. This is the one that does have the auto sensing technology. So we do not have to adjust the blade depth. We do not have to adjust how the knife cuts. It's all read and done automatically. The wonderful thing about the Scan and Cut is it's a standalone product. You do not need additional accessory for this to work. You do not have to use software. You do not have to use any other outside designs. Everything can be put loaded right into the Scan and Cut because it has its own scanner. And it is a high resolution scanner. So it will pick up tiny, tiny, intricate detail. This is going to be your favorite new toy. And if you don't have a scan and cut yet, you know, um, it's almost time for dreidel, 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 or Santa Claus, or Kwanzaa <laughs> King to come along. So put it on your wish list. And if you have one, 
Just like earrings, these look better in pairs. You could have two. I have four. So I love <laughs> gimme cuts because they are so much fun. And a uh, side note, you can even use skin and cut in the kitchen. Did you know you can use this when you're baking? You what? can use your skin and cut what? to cut sugar Maybe paper I, would, I might even and enjoy fondant. the kitchen. <laughs> Wait, explain that. Yeah, explain so that. <laughs> they make sugar paper and fondant that is designed to go into digital cutters. So if you're doing happy birthday cake for someone, oh. you can use any true type font, any font you have purchased, and cut your letters out of edible <laughs> sugar paper Get and out. say, oh, wow. happy birthday, Joey, or thank you, honey, for the gift you bought me that you didn't know you paid for yet. Any kind of gift, any kind of verbiage, you can cut out designs, you can cut out patterns. You got frozen, uh, the kids coming up with birthdays. You can cut out frozen characters out of sugar paper and put it on their cake. So no Whoa. $75 bakery cakes anymore. You oh do it yourself. God. And it's personalized. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, now we have shoes and a cake. <laughs> we're covering the whole spectrum here. <laughs> and then if it's just you guys and you're doing a fancy dinner party, you can use your scan and cut to etch on glass with. So mm -hmm. etching on glass. You can use it to make temporary tattoos. You can use it to do magnets if you wanted to give holiday gifts and make magnets because Scan and Cut also draws. So your embroidery designs that are built into your machines can be drawn on paper so you will have a greeting card that will match the embroidered gift that you've given someone. Oh my gosh, Liz, you're really, really going to have to up up our game. Oh my for God, it's so fun and so amazing. <laughs> but today I want to showcase more of menswear things and got some things you can give to your guys you know you, we oftentimes see all these wonderful designs and wonderful patterns and everything's geared more towards you know <laughs> ladies and i want you guys to think about your the guys in your life your sons your nephews your dads you know again holidays are coming up so you might be having a socially distanced dinner or something and you want your guy to look really well look good so how about dressing up his dress shirt? So in this dress shirt, this oh my is gosh. the front. And Whoa. this is a combination of embroidery and crystals. This is silver metallic thread that has been embroidered. And then I put the crystals on. Yes, the scan and cut does cut the template. But, you know, you got to have the back that's really, you know, gives it oh that. Oh, my gosh. Thread. Wow. And so on the inside, you can see, just like Kim, I used a water-soluble wash-away stabilizer. It washes completely away. And when I use metallic thread, I do use this on, this was done on our um, Luminaire. The uh, thread is the Brother Metallic Threads. I use a 90 top stitch needle. And I um, also use my machine at full speed. If you don't know, I'm from New York. We don't do anything slow. So <laughs> if it can't go a thousand stitches a minute, Lewis doesn't do it. <laughs> now Lewis, that's that shirt little is shirt. absolutely gorgeous. And then we also have a little color for you guys. So again, holidays coming up, maybe something in the reds. Again, oh. embroidery with crystal. This is red metallic threads. And just an embellishment. And then on the front, you know, you got to have something on your chest pocket to be a little oomph in a little while. And again, the stabilizers, the water soluble wash away stabilizer. So this I use as a sample to show you guys. Here is the stabilizer and then it's washed away in all the spots. So this is very soft. And these get thrown in the wash. I, I wash these and then hang them to dry. So the crystals are fusible hot fix crystals that go onto your garment with heat and they, you know, stay on as, you know, pretty permanent. And I'll show so you one I, last thing right now. Lewis, while you're grabbing that, just a quick question. Done, when you, you got to have your bottles. Them? Oh, he can't hear so, me. So when you want your trousers done, this is all again, <gasps> silver metallic thread. Oh. And then the trouser bottoms have been embroidered. And then after oh they're gosh. embroidered, you take your skin and cut and cut a template, and then you fuse your crystals on. 
brother does have crystals. Now these happen to be, um, you know, the Swarovski crystal to give it a little more oomph oomph. But again, the brother metallic threads are what work so well. And then this is the pant leg did get taken out in the end scene. So it was released in the end scene, but I will twist it inside out so you can see what a gorgeous job it looks even on the inside. Oh, hey, that's always the true test. It, it, if it looks good on the inside, you can count it's going to look good on the outside. And it's beautiful on the inside. I could wear these inside out. Oh, my it God. It does a beautiful job. And that's the, uh, I did this on the uh, Luminaire. Of course, see, Kim has the new tin needle. So I wouldn't have had to do that had I had it on the tin needle where I could have used the new tubular frame to be able to do embroidery on sleeves or on pant cuffs. So I'm going to kind of show you guys using a hot fix vinyl as well as a hot fix crystals and how to cut those templates on your scan and cut. And then you just are going to iron them on. It's so much fun. It's so exciting. Okay. So before you show us, and also I just got to give a quick preview of uh, just, so this is what Kim is going to show just to give you a little preview here. And then Lewis is going to take us on the scan and cut. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. So uh, just real quick. I think it was a couple of people asked this. You mentioned that you launder those at home. So what do you do exactly for that? I am a boy. When boys do laundry, we take it, we throw it in the washing machine and you hit start. <laughs> Lewis, tell me that you do exactly what my husband does where everything is washed. No offense, when everything's washed and hot and dried and hot. Tell me you don't do that. I'm a boy. That's what boys do. <laughs> now, of course, you know, I am in this industry, so I do care for my fabrics and garments a little more particular than most men would. However, those are simply, they're thrown in the wash with my dark colors. They're washed on a regular cycle. They wow. go through a spin cycle. I, I hang them to dry. Very seldom do I dry anything in the dryer uh, besides bed linens and things. But those shirts are hung to dry. Oh my gosh. They're and absolutely everybody is just t shirt. So inspired. Jenny said, could she have one more look at that jacket? And yes, he did do his jacket in case you missed that. So one more peek at your jacket and then we'll before this we go to the tutorial. A white uh, party jacket that I had to do. So this again is scan and cut. Oh my so gosh. I trace around the black and white pattern so you can see this is the actual pattern on the jacket. This I left blank because you know you don't want to blind someone. So here I have a combination of the pattern. And then under the pattern, there are ink colors that is colored in. So the jacket starts out black and white, but then you take your inks and you color it in. And then you take scan and cut. So you trace it. And then because scan and cut has a scanner, you can scan the pattern and it'll cut the template so that you can place the crystals all in the right places. Oh my gosh. And so I can't see the back if I'm showing it to you or not. So you guys are going to have to just trust me that it's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just Absolutely a fun gorgeous. piece and something neat to do. Um, so if you want to do something more exciting for your guy, you know, you have a wedding or something like that or special where he's in a rock band or he does, <laughs> you know, performances, give him a performance piece. Oh my gosh. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, so these everyone on here said this. these shows are going to have to be way more than an hour to get all these tutorials. Who wants to go first, Kim or Lewis? Which one of you guys? You want to do the scanning cup first or the shoes? Kim's going because Lewis has to have coffee. Oh. <laughs> 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 you Kim is not ready before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, remember those those pink shoes that I showed you that go with that that um, flamingo jacket? Those shoes were actually this color when I started them, and I have a bunch of different paints that I use, and I I uh, spray like a um, a sealer on there first, and it's like just so you know that you prepare your canvases, but I prepare my shoes, so I stuff newspaper in the shoes, and then I spray them with a, a very light spray of like a sealant to make the paint stick and then just paint them. 
and they come out. Um, I, I, I like how they come out. And there's a thing that we do at the end to seal all that in as well. So these shoes, I just want them to stay this color. So I've just started this one so you could see what it looks like in progress. But it starts out, I have my embroidery hoop with my sticky wash away stabilizer. And this is tool. It's just a, a light coating of tool. And I have like, I have a huge, huge plastic bucket full of all different colors of tool. And whenever I see new ones, um, I just get a yard of it. You never know. And then this is actually to go on the rest of the shoe, let's flamingle. Um, and this is going to be two different parts. So this is on pink tool on wash away stabilizer. So I try to get as many things on the hoop as I can. So before I started this project, I did the same thing in my hoop with the tan colored tool. And I went into my design center and I selected these, this B, this is just one B and I made it bigger. And then um, I duplicated it several times and scattered them around the hoop. And then the next one I made smaller. Can you, oops, where's the small one here? You see the little one. I made some little ones too. So I just made all different sizes. I reversed some, flipped some over, you know, mirror image them so that they, it looks like a lot of different bees. And this bee is actually really pretty. It has a lot of variation. Can you see the That's, blue in there? Oh my gosh, those bees are so stinking cute. Aren't they cute? I was really surprised. They're so dimensional. Um, it's two different colors of gold. And then it has that little bit of blue in there too. It's so pretty. So, so anyway, I let these stitch out. And of course, now when these stitch out, you can you can lock all the colors so that you don't have to, like if I did 25 bees in a hoop, I don't have to sit there. There's, I think, four or five uh, thread changes. I don't have to sit there one bee at a time. You know, it'll do all the same gold at once and all this, you know, all the black. So it really went pretty quickly. And then you tear it off of this, the uh, stabilizer. And then I just cut around each one with my scissors. And let me come over here. I stuff them into this pickle jar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got more kitchen. We have more <laughs> kitchen coming into this. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just an old pickle jar that I use for fabric dyeing. So I put some warm water in there and put all my little bits and pieces. And sometimes I have fonts and sentences and things like that. Put the lid on, give it a good shake. Um, I take it outside. I have a patch of mint that I'm trying to kill. Um, and I, so I just dump it in that patch of mint. And so far, I think the mint likes it. But um, then I rinse it several times to get all of that uh, stabilizer washed out and then come back in. And on the back of these, there's going to be like little threads where the bobbin thread has snipped. So you want to cut all those away so it looks nice and neat on the back as well as the front. And I just leave a little bit of the tool around the edges. And now I'm going to show you how to get them on the shoe. Get this one out of oh the way. Gosh, that is so cute. So I have a couple of brushes and I have, this is like glue. It's like um, just kind of like white glue. Remember when we used to decoupage back in the seventies, if anybody's that old, anybody that old here? <laughs> <laughs> no way. No I way. <laughs> so I take one of the little butterflies <clears throat> and I slap on some of this white glue and then put that right on there and put the glue over the top as well and just kind of squish it down. And then I take these pins and these leather and vinyl shoes are awesome. You can just stick the pins right in there. Oh my gosh. And I'll tell you, it takes a lot of pins um, and you have to do it several different times to get it, you know, all to stick down. Sometimes it's like a two day process. Louis, I'm thinking, Louis, you definitely need to add this to your next jacket. I'm, I mean, maybe not those shoes exactly. <laughs> well, I was going to ask Kim, um, could I get a jar of the honey? Because those bees look so real. Oh, my God. I thought it was going to sting her. <laughs> cute. And just a FYI, in case you guys don't know, 
and Kim and the Honey and the Bees. Right now, um, this past season, that was actually the design uh, collection for Gucci. They show bees. bees. Oh, so Kim, Kim, you're very, you know, in the no. Oh, really? Well, let me see. Can you see my? Where's my earrings? Can you see my earrings? Oh, oh wait, God! <laughs> <laughs> I love them. So, so you just and see as you can see, it, it looks really messy um, right now. But as you add the bees. And you just keep adding them, and I could put them all up around the back, all down the back thing there. And you just keep adding the bees. And then as they dry. So, hey, uh, we there's a few questions for you as you're going here, just to, if you don't mind us bugging you and asking that. But okay. um, so as you're doing this, a few people ask, are there any special pins that you're using to put in those shoes that, I mean, you're just pinning it that kind of looks like what I look like at the end of the day after working all day yeah. <laughs> um for the shoes I uh, will talk about the other project later but for the shoes I like to use these really thin skinny pins um I thought I had to use the big pins to really hold it down but then by the time you get all the glue and everything in there you need pliers to pull them out and it leaves a big hole so so I don't know if you can see the bottom of this. The back side of that pin is real fine. Yeah, I can with, see it. And with these vinyl and leather shoes, they do they stick right in. And then they pull out easily. So so for this project, yes, I do use the real skinny ones um, on the purses and the wood and different things. Uh, I'll, I'll use different pins. So, oh my goodness. And one more quick question. A lot of people that missed it, where did you get the B file from? I got that. It's built into the Luminaire 2 or with the upgrade to Luminaire 1. All right. And if you want to know the category number, I'll look while Lewis is uh, showing you his scan and cut and I'll bring it back. Um, Wonderful. So these, I mean, I could keep put adding bees. I could add like be kind. I could do little fonts on here. Um, this one, actually, I went into uh, our software and I did a, a banner here that says be kind and it and it narrows as it goes down. So that's going to be on the side when they're all finished. You stuff newspaper back in here. You take them outside and spray outdoor polyurethane, probably maybe 10 coats, but a real light spray. And then they're protected. I mean, my shoes are better protected than my outdoor furniture most of the time. <laughs> so. Um, and there's a couple other tricks that we can talk about that later. But um, so are you ready, Lewis? Is Lewis oh, my ready? gosh. These are so cute. So I'm going to bring everybody up here real quick because there's just a couple okay. questions for you. So um, do, are there any B designs in embroidery that you can think of off the top of your head? Uh, that big one is what I got from embroidery. That great okay, big one with so the crown is beautiful. I saw a few people asking about the bees. So if you go to ibroidery.com and I'll put the website down here for you too. Yeah, um, look under the, the category for the big hoop, the 10 and, uh, 10 and 5 eighths by 16 inch hoop. And it's in that category. Yeah. Wonderful. It's and you guys can keep asking your questions because we'll take um, more of the questions at the end. But I can tell you those, <laughs> those shoes are awesome. <laughs> those well, these are in honor of me. my, these are in honor of my sister. She has beehives. <clears throat> And she gives us honey for free. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, Tammy. <laughs> that's a good trade. I'll take the pickles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Lewis has a really fun project for us too. And I saw quite a few coming in later. So please know that we are live on the Brother So's Facebook and YouTube page for crafting and sewing. And you can come back and watch this anytime on any of those pages. So if you missed the beginning, or you want to watch this again, you can share it to your page or just come back and watch it anytime. So this is going to be one that I think is going to be rewatched over and over. So Lewis, your turn. You take it away now. Well, I have to tie in with Kim and I have to show you my bees. And so if you can see my queen oh. bee oh. in gold vinyl, I did this as an all over pattern on a t-shirt and oh, that is just with a heat transfer vinyl. And I thought, oh my God, I have a t-shirt that goes with Kim's bees. So <laughs> well, I don't think over. the shoes will fit though, but that's okay. I'll have to send her a pair of mine so she could just jizz them up. 
So Arnal is challenging Lewis. Arnal is challenging you to make foods that we can eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want the honey. So I'm going to, you know, hook up Kim's sister with something so I can get some honey too. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to share with you guys how you would create um, a template to create an iron on transfer. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be over the top bling and it could be something fun, you know, especially, you know, um, they say that during this pandemic time that come, you know, January, February, March, there's going to be a lot of new babies. So <laughs> you're going to have to make a lot of new baby stuff. So how about making something a cute saying on a little onesie or on, you know, you need, um, Diap uh, diapers. Well, I don't think you want blings on the diapers, <laughs> but you know, on the bibs and on all the stuff for the baby or That's for the big baby, because I'm sure you all have big babies now too around. So <laughs> I'm going to um, kind of flip over to my scan and cut, I think, and uh, kind of go there. And Angela has hers um, where you guys can see the screen a little bit more clear. So while she's um, getting her thing set up there, I'm going to just come over and talk to you about the scan and cut and what you need to get started. So you'll want to have the rhinestone kit, which is a premium kit that works in your scan and cut. It has to be activated in scan and cut canvas. So, and I know you guys can't really see me, but I'm not important right now. The project is, so don't worry about trying to see me. I'm going to make sure to have mine on and, uh, and she'll pop hers up, but I do have a little tray that has all my little tools and I have all that stuff ready to go. And I have my crystals, so those are ready. And then you'll also have in your rhinestone starter kit, there is the template material. Now this flocked material peels, it has a adhesive backing and it'll stick to your mat. So as you peel it away, this part will stick you throw the paper part away but you also use this when you want to do faux etching so this is not just for crystals and i'm going to talk about that in just one second you can use either the low tech or your standard mat and then i have it already loaded in the machine and as you can see in mine i've already let me just drop that down i've already cut stuff on here so when I cut uh, templates for crystals, I don't. I just leave one mat set, and then I put the film back over it to protect it, so you don't get lint and dust. But I don't try to remove this. This just stays. And then when I need to cut another template, it's ready to go. You load it into your scan and cut, and then you cut your new template. But I don't try to peel away anything until I've used every drop of this flocking material off of the mat that I've set it on. That's so a great idea. has hers up and ready. And we're using the Scan and Cut 230DX, which is our Disney model. So we need to go get a rhinestone pattern. Now, this in the Disney version, this particular pattern is built in on the machine. So we're going to go to patterns and pull up the patterns. And then we're going to hey, go Lewis. to Disney. Hey, Lewis, look. Oh, my goodness. Look, did you guys notice how cool this is? The Scan and Cut is letting us know that they, there is an update available and it will wirelessly update your machine and do it all automatically through your settings. Once you tap that, you can have it programmed so that Scan and Cut will update itself once you tell it it's okay to download the update. So Angela, see, we see that it says update available. We won't update it right this second, but that just gave us a warning. And the really nice thing is that your Luminaire your XP one or two can also auto update. So your machine can auto update, your scan and cut can auto update. So you don't have to worry about, oh, am I running the latest version or why is this not working or why is this not activated? Um, it's maybe because you need to update, but the machine's gonna tell you. How cool is That's that? Awesome. awesome. So we'll go into our patterns. And when we go to pattern in the, uh, 230, which is the Disney version, there is a Disney category. And so we'll choose the Mickey Mouse head and it shows us the different embroidery, uh, I'm sorry, the different cut and draw files. And then it also has the uh, crystal template. So these are really beautiful, different designs that are built in on the machine. 
And yes, there are exclusive designs on this machine. There are ones that you cannot download. You can't get them. Yes, we do have Disney available for purchase at on a scan and cut canvas and the different uh, programs and you could buy the different cards. But on this machine, there are exclusive designs that are nowhere else. So if you want to see any of the designs you want, you have to have this version of the machine. Well, right now we've popped up the design and this is again, one that's already ready to go. So you don't have to do anything but just load it and use it. You don't have to design it. You don't have to tell it to become crystals and scan and cut canvas It's ready to go. It has our size, which is adjustable, which you know we've never been able to do with Disney. So we can adjust, but we're gonna simply tell it okay at this point because we wanna go ahead and get this ready to cut. So we'll tap okay. And once we tapped okay, it says, hey, is this the pattern you want? And we say, yes, okay, again. And it says, how many of these do we want? Well, we only, when you're cutting rhinestone templates, unless you're going to be um, giving the template away physically, you don't need to cut more than one template generally. So we'll leave it set for one and tap you don't set. Need, you don't need a separate template for each diaper, okay, guys? <laughs> yeah, because one template is, the template makes the transfer. You can make a thousand transfers from one template. So you don't need 50 templates. So right now it wants to know, do we want to edit this, add anything, move it, adjust it? I have my mat scanned in already because I have pre-cut other templates off of my mat. So below edit, the in the center is your blue scanner. And that will scan your mat so that you can see, like say you had red fabric, blue fabric, green fabric, and yellow fabric all in a little square on your one mat you would be able to see where each fabric is positioned. So you could then line up the pattern on top of each piece of fabric. Since I've already done that, we're gonna simply tap okay. Okay, that's pretty easy. And I'll bring you back over to your screen then. Oh wait, we're not quite and done yet. One more. So now it says, well, what are you gonna do with this? So we're gonna hit please select. And we tap please select. Remember, scan and cut can cut and it can draw. But besides that, you can foil, you can emboss. And with the new paper piercing kit, you're able oh. to do piercing. There's also the new calligraphy set kit. There are so many additions to work with Scan and Cut. It's amazing, guys. So we're going to select cut because we want to cut. It automatically sets it up. And our half cut is off. The pressure's all on automatic. Everything is really set and ready to go. So you do not, you, to be clear, you do not have your half cut on, right? It's off? No, no half cut when you're cutting the vinyl. We don't okay. want to use half cut because you're not doing a kiss cut. I mean, sorry, the template material. You're going to cut all the way through. Okay. If you're going to cut the vinyl, like us on my T-shirt with the bees, that you do what's called a half cut or a kiss cut because there's a clear vinyl carrier. Now, when you go between different textures or different fabrics that you're cutting such as you're going from template material to fabric back to vinyl you should always do a test so if we tap on test i want to just give you guys a quick tip there i recommend that you use the uh we'll choose the shape that we want to cut the test from so in the center there are the shapes so we'll tap down where the circle and the triangle is uh, next to the four arrows if i can Got to get my tools out. Uh huh. But tap your uh tap your shapes in the middle underneath the word cut down in the center, the circle and the triangle, and we want to choose the circle. Oh. And I'm going to tell you why you want to cut with a circle when you're testing. A Isn't circle really is every <laughs> single angle. A triangle only has those angles, those three angles. So you don't necessarily know if it's going to cut when it goes around a curved edge Have you if you have something curved. So I'm going to make this the bigger just so they can see it. Yeah, that you can adjust the size so you can get a bigger test. If that little bitty dot is just too small for you, you can change it, the size of your test cut. So when we tap OK, it's going to then ask us, hey, are we ready to get ready to start? Now, Angela's start is grayed out because she doesn't have a mat loaded. I have mine loaded, so we'll flop back up, switch back over to my screen. 
and uh, over to my machine and you guys will see uh, what's happening here. So at, uh, it's hard to see on mine, but my start is really lit up. I'm just gonna let my mine cut. And while it's cutting, I'm gonna show you how, because I've already also pre-cut one to show you how to actually use the template. So I'm gonna take my stylus and hit start and you'll hear it. I gotta be quiet because <laughs> it's so quiet. And that is the machine measuring the depth of what it is you're cutting. It's sensing how thick it is and it knows to adjust the blade depth according to the thickness. I love scan and cut. Well, I've already cut out one of the little templates. And so when you have a template and you cut it out, that's what it's doing right now is it's cutting all these little holes. Once it cuts all the little holes, you're gonna peel away that off of your mat. And when you peel it off the mat, you're gonna put it onto what we call hardboard. So this board comes in the kit also, and you cut it down to size. And when I make templates, I use both sides. I don't ever, you know, just use one side because you wanna get as much as you can uh, for your money, much bank for your buck. So now that it, we peeled it off the mat, we stuck it to the hardboard. This is a permanent template now. You can use over and over and over again. And the coolest thing, this is the fun part. No one ever believes how simple the scan and cut actually is to work with with your rhinestone kit. So I've simply laid this down and I'm gonna maybe adjust the camera down a little bit. It's laying down flat, right? I'm gonna take my crystals. Now these I cut to a size SS10, which is the size of crystals. They're measured by that size and they come in sixes and go all the way up to 48s. So you can have jumbo crystals or any size and you literally take your crystals and you dump them. You do not have to try oh to peel goodness. those crystals. <laughs> this you is use your special you brush. And when Lewis, you use your special just... brush, then you're going to take it and brush in a very light, gentle, circular <laughs> motion. So notice I'm going in a light, circular motion. You do not do this when you are mad at the kids, mad at traffic, mad at the world. Light, gentle circles. So when I'm doing this in person with you guys and in a class, I always tell everyone, like my mother used to say to my sisters, ladies, ladies, remember your ladies, your light, gentle circle. And if you hold your brush at a 45 degree angle, it will brush away the excess crystals without removing the crystals that are in the holes. You want it to fill the holes in and like magic, it is going to brush the crystals into each hole and you will have a crystal template that's all filled in with crystals. Wow. You're gonna make sure you don't have any extra or there are none upside down. I happen to have an upside down, a whole one that's missing. So when you have one that's missing, you also have a special tool that you can use to grab a single crystal. So I'm gonna keep my tray and I'm gonna grab a crystal. And when you grab the crystal, you're able to put that right in the hole and drop it right down where it's missing. So all I'm doing is taking it and setting it and checking because uh, uh, from time to time you will have a hole, you know, when you're brushing, you might not get all the holes. Make sure none of them are upside down. You check it really close. Make sure all your holes are filled in. Now, a tip, if your studio, your area where you're working has a rug or carpet, the crystals, this next step, will um, be very sensitive to static. So you want to try to make sure to do this on one of those mats. Like I have one of those, you know, mats that your chairs can roll over or a rubberized mat or some wood floors are fine, tile floor is fine, but any rugs that can create static, this next step will make the crystals um, spring up when you're not ready. So this is the transfer film. This comes in sheets. So everything here comes in a big 12 by 12 sheet. So you have a 12 by 12 sheets of the template material, 12, and 12, 12 by 12 sheets of the transfer film, and 12 by 12 sheets of the hardboard. 
Um, right now, scan and cut is finished. So I'm just going to tap OK, and I'm going to unload my mat since that part is already set and ready to go. I'm going to show you that. But I want to peel away my template to show you how you do this. So we're going to simply come to a corner, and you have a spatula tool that you also can use to help you to remove your template material. Now, I told this to add a weeding box. And a weeding box is a rectangular or square box that goes around your pattern to make it come up easier when you're cutting and trying to remove this. So now that I have that up, I'm going to simply start and pull away my excess. So see, I'm peeling away. This is the excess right there. Now that part, I save even these little scraps so that when you go to clean your mat, you can use these to pick up all the little extra dots. So don't throw away the extra because you need it. It'll help you. And so we're going to go ahead and use our tool. And I'm going to lift up a corner. Oh, sorry, and Louis. I got to tell you, I'm laughing. I'm You'll laughing with you because. Peel away. <laughs> and as you gently peel away, you want the dots to stay down on the bottom. They're supposed to stay there. So that's correct. And that as you was this supposed up, to happen, right, Kim? <laughs> exactly. With a fabulous new template that now, and you do this gently so that the holes don't rip. And as you peel it away, you carefully peel so that it doesn't cling to itself. And this I'm going to do this holidays. really quick so I can switch back over really? to Kim, guys. And I'm going to now take my new template and I'm going to put it on the back side of my old template as soon as I do my crystals. So that part is now done. We can set this over the side. Whenever you finish with your mats, you make sure to always put your film cover back over the top of it so that you don't get lint and dust because that's one of the most harmful elements to your mat. So make sure to cover it. So now that it's covered and out the way, this is the original template with the crystals all in the holes. You peel away your film, set that over to the side, the backing that you peeled it away from because, oh my God, would this be a cute stocking stuffer? You can give this to people. They can iron it on themselves. You don't have to do all the work yourself, guys. Make some people do some work, okay? So we're <laughs> going to simply stick this down. The sticky side is on the bottom, and it's going towards the crystals. You do not hesitate. You line it up, and you stick it. Don't think. Just stick. <laughs> and now you can take your little brayer that also is one of our tools to roll it to make sure all your crystals, and we have a little brayer tool, are going to stick. And as you lift it up, you want the crystals to come up. This is what they're supposed to do. So we're going to peel this away. And as we peel that away, all of your crystals come up and off. And I'm going to put the backing back so you guys can see. Oh. And I'm going, trying to be careful and grab this. And it's, of course, flipping on me now. And this is something you also probably don't want to do after happy hour. But <laughs> you could get together and do, you know, your wine and dine and have fun with your girlfriend <laughs> or whatever. And so now... Kind of hard to see. There it goes. Oh, we yeah. see it. Crystal. This Ooh. is now an iron-on transfer. You can give this to someone as is and let them put it on what they wanted to. Or you can take this over and you iron through the film. So when I want to put this onto a project, I'm literally going to take my template and I'm going to grab a piece of fabric. Your fabric is so... Up, you are going to take this and put it on your fabric. So organized. It's like such. And once it's on your fabric, you will then be able to press that. That's a horrible piece of fabric to do that on. <laughs> so I'm show. How about we put it on green like that? There yeah, you go. Now you can better. see. This is not going to melt. The plastic won't melt. It's heat tolerant. Um, you, I still use a press cloth, so I do have a Teflon press sheet I put over it, and I do have a heat press. You can use a regular iron, but you have to remember that you are going to, uh, when you're doing your uh, a regular standard iron, we are going to uh, press and not iron. Iron moves. A pre when you're pressing with your iron, you stop and drop, stop and drop. 
and you hold it on for about 15 seconds, depending on the heat on your iron. My press has an auto heat on it and it'll tell me and beep at me. And once you peel it away, you'll end up with a beautiful template and a beautiful design. And so this shirt is now got a beautiful. So don't just think you got to do it on plain shirts, guys. This oh, is crystals. And then on the back is a heat transfer vinyl because you don't necessarily always need the bling. This is a matte vinyl pattern that I cut in, Chris, in scan and cut. I hope you guys love that because I just had so much fun with this. It's so cool oh and gosh. clever. Lewis, this is has absolutely... neat ideas that she can use to com combine her uh, embroidery and her uh, appliques and her uh, different stitch files to use with the scan and cut with crystals also. Right, Kim? Exactly. Lewis, that's fabulous. Oh my I God. I miss seeing them in person though, right? <laughs> I know I'm we sorry, all I didn't hear you. I said, I just miss seeing them in person. The ones you showed earlier oh. were just the red one and that, oh, the, oh, wow. Well, some of those are new. You haven't seen all of them. I have not. <laughs> so I'm a little salty about that right now. So <laughs> Hey, Lewis, there's, there was like quite a few people out here that had questions for you. So I'm going to okay. take this. Let me just bring this. There we go. I'll just leave your shirt up there so we can see it. So everyone first off says that they absolutely love <laughs> both of these tutorials, which I totally agree. But um, can you use a commercial transfer heating press on those or do you, is it better to use an iron? Better to use a press than an iron. Okay. That answers that. And a lot of people were asking, should that be mirror imaged? And it's actually no, because no. the crystals are facing up. You mirror image the vinyl because the vinyl is a kiss cut. If it's a verbiage, if it's words, if it's a pattern and symmetrical, you don't have to worry about it with vinyl. Yeah. But with lettering, in order to read it, then you'll want to mirror it. That makes sense. So, for example, I, um, you guys know, uh, of course, the time that we live in and the climate we live in. I had a friend that wanted a Black Lives Matter shirt, so I cut that for her out of a Kenty cloth. This is vinyl, guys. This is not fabric. It's a vinyl. Wow. And it was mirrored so it would cut correctly. And then I also have a uh, tennis group that I'm doing and they are, uh, this is their logo. Oh, that's nice. And so that was mirrored so that it would then be able to iron on correct way. So nope, you don't have to uh, mirror crystals. That's awesome. And hey, Kim, a couple people are asking since your shoe's sitting there. <laughs> no, you can't have them. <laughs> yes, what's the question? They're all saying that they absolutely love it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. They're, so, they're so fun. They're really fun. Now, one thing I will point out that's really cool with the crystals is that even though these crystals are hot fix and they're designed to go on um, garments, I've put them on dishes and glasses. The secret is you have to heat the glass first. So you put, if it's on a glass, you fill it with water and you put it in the microwave and then you get it hot and then you take it out and then you stick your vinyl, your uh, transfer onto the glass and it, it thinks it's like fabric. That makes sense. That makes sense. You can't put them on your cakes though. You These are not edible. <laughs> They're not edible. I'm gonna keep Kim's shoes up there and she's running through her other camera so we can actually see her. If you guys have any questions for them, be sure to ask. Our hour is up, but I have to tell you, this has been one of the most fun hours I've had in a long time. I have a stash of shoes and a stash of bling, but I have a question for you, Lewis, personally, because when I did that last, uh, my last, I did the I Love Mickey and I put it on a bag. It's super, super, super cute. I ended up with little black dots all over my studio. And I love your yes, tip for having the, that extra uh, template material, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I never thought of doing that. Um, well, that is, uh, if you, again, the little black dots from that template material, when you clean that stuff up, that's why I try to keep it contained and use the scrap strips. You know how I show the strips. 
once you get done, you take those little strips and pat your mat and pick those dots up prior to moving that mat. <laughs> once you move that mat, dots are everywhere. <laughs> and they are sticky. <laughs> and yes, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but you know, that's when you know you pick up the phone and 1 800 Mary Maids and hey. <laughs> No affiliation to brother, by the way. No affiliation to brother. <laughs> so hey, Angela. Great show. Uh, what What did you say, Kim? Did you want me to go to that other camera still? Or are we yeah, go ahead. For the, for the chairs? Yeah. You guys, okay. we're going to give you a sneak peek of what's coming the next time these two are on, which is, besides, I can't even imagine it could be more, <laughs> uh, even better than it is now. But... Yeah. Think right, Angela. Next time, okay, we did garments this time, so I think next time we're talking about doing maybe some home deck stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna show I you guys how so. to decorate and get your homes beautiful. And Kim Especially has got great ideas, and then hopefully, like mine, even the crystals or the vinyl. Um, I have uh, pillows that I'm doing. And I think I see. I just. Hey, Kim, if you can hear me, I, I just lost your camera. Well, I'm doing a monogrammed pillow. Oh. And this is on vinyl, and it's got iron on glitter vinyl on the oh, that's vinyl. that's gorgeous. And so this is going to have a beaded trim to go around it, and then it'll have the fabric to go on the outside of that, and then there'll be a beaded trim on top. So next time... We're going to kind of show you maybe some things like that and how you can incorporate utilizing all of the stuff with your um, home decorating things. Yes, I love that. And I see, Kim, I can see your camera now. You're back. Can I just give me a thumbs up when I can bring you up here? Because wait till you see this thumbs that we're good. Okay, you're coming in. <laughs> I think that was a thumb. I'm hoping that was a thumb. <laughs> that was my thumb, yes. <laughs> Okay, check this okay. out. So, oh my God. All right, so this kind of looks like a tombstone right now. But <laughs> I started doing these chairs <clears throat> for a chair at the auction. And um, <clears throat> so I pick up these terrible looking, terrible, like spider poop. And like these, <laughs> the cushions were covered with like straw and naga hide and all kinds of crazy stuff. And you tear it all apart. This is actually a brand new seat. <clears throat> wow. That I've, <clears throat> excuse me, I've embroidered my favorite bee on. And then this, it says, though I be little, oops, I fell, I be fierce. So this is done the same way the shoes were done. And this is for a charity auction um, for our Lake Erie Island. There's a historic society. So that's coming up. It's been, of course, postponed. This is another one that I did. Um, it says, oh I'm fairly certain that giving a cape and a nice tiara, she could save the world. And this again, too, this was like brown and, and burgundy, and it had a torn straw, you know, seat, and it was just nasty. So um, this will be next time. Oh, my gosh. This is so cute. Louis. <laughs> so now we're going to have home deck and bling i'm so excited for this kim i love that so we you can pop sit in one of those chairs and pop in and say hi to us so they can see your face before we leave <laughs> oh i think i'm on rear facing am i on <laughs> you're on <laughs> oh no but that was off <laughs> so hey lewis this was an awesome show kim i think kim's going back to her other hey kim <laughs> i got you <laughs> um, Everybody's saying they cannot wait. So just watch the schedule. Brother has all the events listed on their uh, Brother So's Facebook page. And there's Kim. There we can see your beautiful face. Now, these two tutorials were absolutely fantastic. And don't forget, you can go back and watch them anytime. I can hardly wait for the chairs. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's so, fun. <laughs> so much fun. And doors, everything. We'll talk about that later. Can't Wonderful. hear you, Kim. <laughs> we lost Kim's sound, but that's okay. We gotcha. <laughs> so everyone, thank you for watching. Brother Sos, thank you for letting the brand ambassadors, the brother educators take over your page. This is absolutely my favorite. I can hardly wait till next week. So you guys have a great weekend. And everyone, thanks for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.